Hi, welcome to this tutorial on mass spectrometry. In this tutorial, we're just going to have a quick look at the workings of a mass spectrometer, uh, how we prepare the sample, and how we actually end up with a spectrum at the end. And I'll go over a little bit of the history of mass spectrometry as well. Okay, what I'll do now is give you a brief overview of how the spectrometer works and how we get a spectrum out of the spectrometer, and then I'll talk about it in a little bit more detail in every stage in a little bit more detail towards the end. So the first thing we do is introduce our sample into the spectrometer and then we make it volatile so that it goes in this chamber here and then it's it's heated up and it's under quite reduced pressure anyway so it turns into a gas. It goes into the ionization chamber next where it's bombarded by high energy electrons. So we're going to use electron impact in this example. There are other methods that I won't discuss here. So the effect of those bombarding electrons is to knock off an electron from the molecule leaving a radical cation behind. Now that is charged and that can be uh, deflected in the magnetic field if you will. Now particles with a large mass will be deflected less than particles of a lighter mass because uh, of inertia really. So the result of this is that we've uh, basically been able to differentiate between uh, different particles or different molecules even based on differences in the mass. Mass spectrometers are extremely sensitive and extremely useful and that's why they've been used in space exploration and they're still used today in like research laboratories and things like that. They're an incredibly powerful technique for structural elucidation and like I said they're very very sensitive so you'll need tiny tiny amounts of compounds to be able to pick up a signal. Historically uh, Wilhelm Wien constructed a device based on a cathode ray tube in 1899 with an electric and magnetic field to deflect the positively charged particles and separate them according to the mass and charge ratio. But it was J.J. Thomson, uh, the guy who discovered the electron, who optimised the techniques uh, in, in a better way by using a vacuum chamber giving us essentially the first ever mass spectrometer. So let's have a quick look at the mass spectrum. If we look at this mass spectrum of toluene, where do we look? What we're looking for? Well, first of all, you should look for the parent ion, and the parent ion is is a is the one which just had an electron removed, so the molecule is more or less intact. And sometimes you can't see this, but in the spectrum we can, and that's at 92 there. The next peak along at 91 is the largest, the most abundant peak in the spectrum, and that's because uh, a hydrogen radical will fall off pretty quick to leave leave this uh, this ion, this cation that you see here. And then you've got all the other kinds of fragmentation that goes on as the molecule just totally fragments and breaks down in the uh, mass spectrometer. And all these little fragments and all these little rearrangements that go on before it reaches the detector can be seen at the detector. And that is why it's so powerful, such a powerful technique. And every time you put toluene, in this example, into the mass spectrum, you'll see a spectrum just like this, similar intensities and things like that. And notice as well, if you look there at 93, if you're observant, you'll see uh, there's probably an extra uh, mass there, and that extra mass is uh, caused by uh, the detection of isotopes. So it's an incredibly powerful technique, you can detect even individual isotopes. So that's it for an introduction to mass spectrometry. I'll put quite a few worksheets up on Epistemio um, so you can practice looking at the spectrum and maybe even guessing at some of the um, fragments that, you, that come off. It's always, always really good practice to do stuff like that. So that's it for now. Bye for now. <laughs>